if you really want to do business, right, you put 50k in, uh, you may never see it back again. Hi, my name is Zoe. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And in this channel, I speak with guests and we share perspectives and our insight into things that really matter. If this is what you're looking for, do consider subscribing. And in today's episode, we have Sylvia from T Apothecary to share with us the practical mindsets you must have in business. Coming up. Definitely with a business, you need a lot of money and mm. you need money that you can afford to lose. This is something that I, I mean, I tell my friends, or you cannot put in, a, you cannot like think that you have 50k and you think that I'm going to invest 50k in my business and it should grow to like 100k within like six months or one year that kind like you don't mm. even think about it because if you really want to do business right you put 50k in uh, you may never see it back again mm. so you need to go in with that mindset that you're prepared to lose the 50k yeah, because yeah, yeah, honestly if you go and read about like business people people who have started business just right i mm. mean how often do you read cases where always oh, a one hit wonder and no, mm, everybody exactly. has to suffer setbacks. Everybody lose yeah. millions and, you know, hundreds and thousands. They have to sell their house, you know. Yeah. I mean, of course, I'm quite glad that till today, I haven't had to resort to anything like that. Mm. And I think also because if uh, even if you face setbacks in business, as long as you are happy doing what you're doing, I think that's the most important. It's very difficult. Like, you will actually feel burnout. That's mm. the thing. Like You might feel okay. that, yeah, maybe you don't do. La. Just go back and work easier. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you know when you when you actually run your own business it's not like when you work you know when you work you can yes. take leave okay i go to i want to take two weeks off i go to australia for a holiday mm. and then that two weeks you don't think about anything you can't yeah, do yeah. that like if, it, yes. if you're running your own business you got to think oh who's going to cover my shift for two weeks then if something yeah. happens who they have to call and then you're constantly yeah. worried you know so what if my staff take money from my mm. bill then how you know yes, it's quite it's very very stressful you can never leave your business behind okay. you know it's like tied yeah. to you it's like a baby tied to you yes yes <laughs> yes it leads yes. to every single minute so i think that's also the misconception that people see of business owners they say wow well, like you know very good now you can control everything but actually i think whatever that's going on in their mind is a yeah. daily constant it's more stressful than <laughs> being employed because so, honestly when something comes up uh, uh, you have to tackle it you there's nobody you can call you yeah. know you have to like the pipe the pipe is leaking. Lopan, the more pan. Then you're like, uh, pipe leaking. Oh no, I don't know. You, know? <laughs> yeah, you have to call somebody down. You have to have all these contacts, yeah. like uh, in your handphone. You know, yeah, if the yeah, electric yeah. suddenly black out and uh, and then it keeps tripping and then you know it's like all these mm. things, or machine problem. Machine cannot seal properly or like uh, there's something wrong. Like it is flooding and then mm. so what do you do? There's pest problem. You know, so all these you have to you have to like get ready law. Or sometimes they mm. say, oh, we forgot to order creamer. How? Like, oh, you forgot about other sugar. I mean, all this is still easy to get, but the thing is that it's something that you have to buy from Taiwan, then, oh, yeah, like, yeah. then, oh, you know, okay, or like your yeah, supplier, yeah. your regular supplier has no stock. Mm. For example, now Taiwan recently had drought, they had drought, they had water restriction. So our supplies were slowed down, and then mm. also um, some of the items we couldn't get anymore. And then okay. now they are, also, they are also battling COVID themselves, so everything has been very slow, very uncertain. So sometimes mm. you need to have like a few different suppliers at hand, mm. and you need to make sure that if their product is can match up to what yeah. you usually serve. Yeah. So at the time, like recently I had this issue with brown sugar. <laughs> Mm. So brown sugar syrup, okay. wow, that one was a very big problem. Like okay. Taiwan side, the water restriction, they couldn't, they, they, they had nothing to ship over, you know. So oh. we had to, we had to go like, I think two weeks without our regular syrup and I had to find something okay. else. Okay. Yeah. So that one was really quite difficult. <laughs> I can sense that you have built a very strong bond with the with the people who work with you. So what are your best advice to building a, a good mm. relationship with, with the people who work for you in that sense? I think always listen to your staff, like what they have to say. Uh, I've had my share of bad staff as well, but there are good ones also. So sometimes really try and identify the good ones, try to keep them with you because they will be your best allies. Uh. I respect my staff a lot, la, the two of mm. them. So I tell them it's okay if you are like sometimes a bit late or what, because I know they work very long hours for me. So I don't scold mm. them if they make a mistake at work. Yep. Like mistakes is inevitable. Even I make mistakes, you know. So mm. don't start yelling at them like like you're some perfect saint like that. Give them chance, now. Give them that chance to grow, okay. and then listen to them because sometimes they can give you very good suggestions. Like some sometimes they are just playing around with the flavors, and then they just tell me, "Hey, you want to try to sell this this item or not? Like maybe maybe it might work, you know." You really need to listen to them because they are really like I think the best people. They they understand mm. the business one, right, and they meet right. customers every day. They are in the front. They are at the front line so i think like sometimes they can be more valuable than you think yeah 
So you have, you're saying that overwork them. Yeah. <laughs> true, true. I, I think the taking care of their welfare and yeah. listening to them and I think they, they know that you respect them. I think these are all ways to keep them like, in that sense because you're saying you really need to keep the good ones. Mm. You were saying that you have had bad stuff. Lah. So, you know, when you hire, how yeah. do you know if... What is your mindset, you know? Because when you hire, it's like a guessing game, you know? So, mm. yeah. <laughs> so hopefully what, what, you will what? never know until they really okay. work for you. But you have your old, your more experienced staff there, right? So they will mm. keep an eye for you. And they will ah, kind okay. of tell you whether this one good or not. Because how would you know? Uh? You wouldn't know. Uh? If you're lucky, the other staff will tell you. Uh? 